Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a Danish war drama film entitled April 9th. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. Second Lieutenant Sand is being taken to the exercise field on April 8th, where his men are training. The order comes from Lieutenant Germanson. Three soldiers are also heading there on foot. Private Graham, Colding, and Anderson were on vacation, but the fun was cut short. They were not told why, all they know is to make sure that they arrive there on time. Sand arrives at the field and is welcomed by Lieutenant Germanson. Sand is told that there's an intelligence report about the munitions movement in Kiel, a city in Germany. Other than the munitions, a train full of troops has also been detected on its way to the border. Germanson adds that a motorcycle company, led by Sergeant Boongard, is headed their way. Sand's men will serve as their backup. The three soldiers arrive late. They are told to get their weapons and join the practice. Germanson orders Sand to assign the three men to Kitchik duty for the week. The soldiers continue with their practice shooting. They have no idea that they are hours away from their most difficult mission to date. After the shooting practice, they are tasked to change their bicycle's front tubes. Once done, they are asked to repeat the same drill over and again. Boongard wants them to finish the task in less than 90 seconds. While taking their meal, a soldier on a motorcycle arrives. He has a message from Lieutenant Colonel Hintz. He wants the exercise to be aborted, and all men are ordered to return to the barracks. They receive new intel that the Germans are heading their way to the border. The men must sleep in uniform and be ready at all times. The soldiers are ordered to stop eating and return to the barracks with their bicycles. Then men are then given 40 rounds of bullets each. They are told to prepare themselves and their equipment. Some soldiers are starting to doubt if this is still an exercise. It appears that something bigger is brewing. Sand suggests that they tell the soldiers what's going on. About the Germans marching their way to the border. Germanson rejects the idea as it's not their job to do that. Sand writes a letter for his wife and then prepares his gun. Danish officers receive a call from Checkpoint 3 that they are able to detect heavy activity on the border. The Germans are closing in. Lieutenant Colonel Hintz wants them to wait for further instructions. Hintz then asks that he speak with the Major General. He requests that his men are allowed to be sent to the border. They are 10 kilometers away. If they waited for the Germans to cross, it would be too late for his men to react. His request is not granted as the order to stand down comes from the higher-ups. The Prime Minister finds it confrontational if they send troops before the Germans cross the border. Sand drops by at Sergeant Klostergaard's office and lets him know that both of them will conduct a room inspection. Private Anderson goes to Private Lawson, who is trying to sleep. Anderson then asks that he give up his ammunition and give it to Private Lundgren instead. Lawson wants to avoid confrontation and decides to concede. Private Graham tells him not to do it. Graham also tells Anderson and Lundgren to go back to bed. Anderson confronts Graham. He insinuates that Graham does not want the Danish to be victorious as he is German. Graham's father is German. Justizen asks them to sleep as they are already disturbing those who are trying to sleep. He then comes face to face with Anderson. Before a fight can break out, the officers barge in. The officers are disappointed to see that the soldiers did not do as told. The soldiers are given two minutes to be quiet. After that, all men are expected to sleep. While outside, Boongard tells Sam that it's hard for the soldiers to sleep in uniform. They then proceed to talk about what will happen once the Germans cross the border. Boongard's men will be the first in line, and Sand's men will be the support. The officers are gathering and are still hopeful that a direct confrontation will be prevented. Moments later, they are called to the radio room. They get a new report from Checkpoint 3 and learn that the Germans have already crossed the border and are attacking them. The communication is then cut. Hintz informs his men that Denmark is now in a state of war. All the soldiers grab their gear and go straight to their bicycles. They are tasked to hold back the Germans from taking Lundtoftebjerg until help from other barracks arrives. They then start to ride on their bicycles in full combat mode. In the morning, as they are getting closer to the border, the motorcycle company is heading their way. Apparently, the Germans can't handle them, so they'll be moving to another border. Lieutenant Germanson is surprised to hear that as their mission is to protect Lundtoftebjerg by all means necessary. They can't just leave the border like that. Boongard tells Sand to convince the lieutenant to follow them. Lundtoftebjerg is beyond salvaging. Boongard and his team then proceed to leave the border. The bicycle company is now on its own. The officers come up with a strategy, and the team is divided into three. The men are now in their positions, waiting for the lieutenant's order. 
They are ordered to use the machine guns first as the Germans are using armored vehicles. The team waits, as it's just a matter of time before the attack begins. Sand and his men can see the armored vehicles of the Germans. He asks his team to wait for his signal. When they are given the go signal to start firing, they are surprised that the bullets are just bouncing off from the enemy's vehicles. Moments later, two of the vehicles are heading their way. Sand orders his men to retreat, but some are not able to hear his command. One of the armored vehicles is damaged. While targeting the Germans on foot, the other armored vehicle aims at them, and Colding is badly wounded. Sand checks on him. Knowing that he is not going to make it, Sand removes Colding's tag. Sand's men are able to run away from the Germans. They find a place to hide. An old lady is shocked to find out that armed men are in her house. Sand calms her down and asks her to be quiet. The team is now waiting if the Germans will manage to track them down. After a few minutes, they are certain that they are now safe. Sand informs his men that they are heading north. That's where the command center is and where they will reunite with Lieutenant Colonel Hintz. He tells Private Graham that he is going to be his second in command. The team moves out of the house. The old woman offers that they stay. Sand explains that they are at war, and his men would not want to hide as well. The soldiers are now back on their bicycles. It's going to be a long ride. Sand's men arrive safely at the command center, where they meet Lieutenant Colonel Hintz again. The officer asks him if they are supposed to protect Luntoftebjerg. Hintz also wants to know where the lieutenant is and the motorcycle company. Sand explains that his team had to retreat after being overwhelmed by the German forces. He also reports that the lieutenant might have been captured. The motorcycle company is headed to a different border after running away from the Germans. Sand notices that Hintz is leaving the command center. He can't help but ask. The officer confides that no reinforcements are coming. The two barracks that are supposed to send reinforcement will keep their soldiers to protect their regions. Hintz wants him to take his team to Hotherslive and continue fighting there. There's nothing that they can do to Luntoftebjerg. Sand then informs his team that they are headed to Hotherslif. The soldiers push their bicycles through the mountains. They are able to take a breather when Anderson's bike needs a repair. Sand notices that Private Noriskov is still devastated after witnessing Private Kolding's death. He approaches him and assures him that he has the entire team to support him. Sand also finds out that Noriskov is engaged. A commotion ensues when Anderson confronts Private Graham for asking him to hurry up in fixing his bike's tire. Sand steps in to prevent the argument from escalating. The bicycle is fixed, and the team resumes their journey. The team hits the road and is reunited with the motorcycle company. They are surprised that the locals are still there and are oblivious to the danger of staying. Sand meets Sergeant Boongard. He explains that they are using the area as a strategic location, but the locals refuse to leave. Sand lets him know that they had to leave Luntoftebjerg after getting the short end of the exchanges. Boongard asks if there's a casualty from the Danish soldiers. He tells him that Private Kolding is killed. Sand also informs Boongard that no reinforcement is coming their way and that the new order is to form a new line of defense in Hotherslif. Boongard can't believe what he just heard. The strategy does not make sense to him. He says he won't sacrifice his men, but Sand reminds him of the order. The officers are informed that the Germans are headed their way. The soldiers are getting ready as the Germans are closing in. They then start firing. When the Germans retaliate, a child is killed. It's evident that their weapons have no match against the Germans. Sand orders his men to retreat once more. They find a lorry, load the bicycles and move out of the area. Private Justizen takes the wheel. Sand tells him to avoid the main road to make sure that they don't run into the Germans. Private Justizen suggests they use Logamkloster Road as it's safer. Sand has no problem with it. Private Justizen then shares that he was born and raised in Hotherslif. He also tells Sand he wants to marry and be a shopkeeper. The team reaches Hotherslif and is reunited with the motorcycle company at a checkpoint. The road is blocked by some soldiers. Sand needs to explain to the officer in charge the importance of the two companies to go through. They are then let in. Sand meets Colonel Hartz. He introduces himself and his team and informs the officer that they are to report to him. Sand also reports that the Germans used armored vehicles and motorized infantry. His team is then ordered to proceed to a specific position to defend. He informs his men that they will get new supplies of ammunition. They then proceed to the location and augment the defense there. Sand makes sure that every soldier is strategically positioned. Moments later, Germans on foot arrive, and a gunfight ensues. When the tank arrives, they must retreat again as their weapons are no match. At one point, 
Noriskov and Anderson are almost killed when the tanks target their location. They manage to get away and survive the onslaught. Private Justizen is hit while trying to escape. Sand asks Graham to provide cover as he and Lawson rescue the wounded soldier. They are able to take Justizen to safety. The team continues to retreat as the Germans keep closing in. Justizen is bleeding badly and in need of immediate medical attention. Sand needs to decide what the next move would be. Will they continue to fight and let his men die? Sand is overwhelmed with what needs to be done as he has very little time to decide. Since they are in a losing battle and one of his men needs a doctor, he asks everyone to surrender. They raise their hands and beg them not to shoot. Emotions run high as the Germans are not certain if the Danish soldiers will do something. Sand asks his men to stand behind him as he's not sure as well if the Germans will start shooting. The team is captured by the German forces. The war is over, and Sand's men are safe. Sand grabs a box of cigarettes and hands it over to everyone. They are then asked to fall in line and march. A German officer asks if one of them can speak German. Sand points to Graham. The German officer then introduces himself as Lieutenant Becker. He wants to know why the Danish soldiers kept fighting when their government had already surrendered. This confuses Sand. Becker then adds that Denmark already surrendered two hours ago. Becker offers that Sand rides with him, but Sand refuses as he prefers to be with his men. Becker gives him a salute. Sand turns around and gets on the bus with his men. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.